Hello and welcome to Show Up Stand Out online visibility series for entrepreneurs. My name is Julia Stapleton. I'm a visibility strategist. And today I have a wonderful guest for you guys, uh, Barb Ames who we have over here, uh, is an online business mentor and freedom navigator. I love that freedom navigator who helps emerging coaches and other change makers who want to, who want an unchained business navigate the complexities of internet marketing as well as self-imposed limitations of the mind to forge the shortest path to financial independence and a joy-filled life. I just love your introduction. I absolutely oh. love it because People are hiding, people are hiding and they're not, you know, so many people are resisting into uh, showing up, especially with internet marketing and anyone who has a business and promotes it online or looks for clients online is, an, is a marketer. You're an internet marketer at that, you know, so, and it's just, I find that it's, uh, well, on one hand, it's fascinating and I know I, I'm much further in that journey, but it's amazing to see transformation of people who believed deeply that they can't do it and then they start doing it and within short period of time they just transform what is your experience with that yeah that's a great question Be you know i work uh solely with change makers as as entrepreneurs as coaches we get to pick who we want to work with and through my own business evolution that's what i landed on and it, i it lights me up i love it and as you said the number one thing that they struggle with is, uh, you know, and, and by the way, change makers in my vernacular means people who want to cause transformation in other people who want to change the world. Uh, they might do it through health, coaching, dating, relationship, whatever, whatever, whatever life. Um, but what they come up against every single time is that marketing, what they think of as marketing feels pushy and sleazy and car, car salesman -y. and And so we have a problem because it's at total odds with how they want to show up in the world. Right. And so that's, I feel like why they're afraid to really stand up and go out there. And then when they do, when they finally like muster the courage to do it and post something about their services, like they get total crickets yeah. or worse yet, they go and mention to one of their friends or somebody they feel like they know well enough to say, oh, this is what I'm all about. This is what I do. And their friend eyes just glaze over. And so now they're further dejected. So what I like to tell people there is, and, and here's the thing, here's the message I want everybody on this call to hear. It's my primary message to my people in the world at large is that, and, and those of you who feel that marketing is salesy and pushy and sleazy, guess what? Marketing is not about you. It's not about you. So here's the thing. We all are trying to figure out how to convey what we do. And that's what we think marketing is. Well, newsflash, and I'm sorry if this sounds a little harsh, and I say this with an abundance of love, nobody cares about what you do. I okay. love this. Yes, it's exactly how I feel. <laughs> I don't okay. mean me. I mean it's exactly how I feel that we need to to wake up and finally understand this. It's not about you. It's not about you. So what that should do, what I hope that does, is help all the change makers that are listening to this or thinking that marketing is salesy and pushy. I hope it makes them go, oh. So I don't have to figure out how to say what I do. I don't have to figure out that magic phrase that describes what I do that makes everybody want to whip out their credit card. No, <laughs> you don't. So just sit down and relax. It's fine. So how do you get people interested in working with you? How do you attract clients? Well, it's the exact opposite of what most people think. It's not about saying what you do or articulating your message or whatever. It's about listening and asking questions. What are you struggling with? What is your problem? And the more questions that you ask, which is completely, not only is that not salesy, not pushy, not anything, it's a huge gift. Yes. Because, right, we don't listen to each other anymore, right? And to have, to have somebody come up and really express interest in you, Juliet, tell me about what, what, what's on your mind these days. <clears throat> what's really lighting you up? What's keeping you from being who you want to be and what you want to do? I mean, 
if somebody came up and asked you that, isn't you're like, wow, I'm on center stage. Somebody cares. Of course, it's it's it, and it's not it's not a sort of fake flattery. It really is. It really just for you to be able to, for five minutes, talk about your dreams that you don't do every day and you don't do that often enough. Really, you know, it's it's a big gift that even if nothing happens out of that conversation, for you to speak for five minutes about your dreams is going to bring you five steps closer to them. So it's a great. That's gift. right. So by asking by you, the change maker, the quote marketer, because in my mind, this is what marketing is. Marketing is asking and then listening, not like listening for what, what, what am I going to say next to, you know, okay, so if she says this, what am I going to say so that she'll, you know, want to hire me? No, 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 no. Just listen, be there a hundred percent present for that person. And when we do that, right? So yes, you give permission to that person. It's such a gift to really feel into and dream into what they want and to really come face to face with what's keeping them from it. And a lot of times you will find in that dialogue, in what that person is saying, your ears, you the marketer now, the change maker, will, will hear something and go, oh, I can help you with that. And now that you've got them clear on the problem and you're clear that that's something you can help them with, you've got a, a match. I, I think of a puzzle piece, right? Like you, you've got a fit and then it's not salesy. It's you're like, they're going, wow, really? You can help me with that? It's like, yeah, sure. That's what I do. I help people with their confidence or whatever they've mm -hmm. uncovered the problem to be. Exactly, exactly. And it's actually, it feels, I remember my very first discovery call, my very, very first discovery call. Uh, on that day, I made $18,000 on that day because I was in that mindset. I was connecting to people. I had no, of course, I wanted to work with them, but uh, only they were a perfect match. I just said to myself, I want to have a perfect match with these people. If I can help them, then truly and i'm the person that i want to connect so i called my calls connection calls for that reason and it was such an amazing energy that day and it happened to me after but but that first day i'll never forget because that energy i never felt and i had a strong resistance to selling you know i felt always even i couldn't do webinars or anything i felt the moment i start talking about my offers i get you know the feeling that i'm selling so and and that was a completely different thing it was just so so smooth and uh, and two amazing people uh, stepped into my life that day <laughs> that i'm so grateful for you know i'm still still working with them and it's amazing you know so that energy and it's all about really listening giving caring um but from your heart and not focusing on the money i know when you start your business and you come online a lot of people have a misconception that you know online business is easier to to have than offline it's not really because it's still based on you know personal personal connection really uh, it's easier to connect to people faster you don't need to leave your office and you know drive and you know none of that you know and then you switch off and that's it that's a good part right but but the rest is is as complex as offline i find uh, and and a lot of people are you know they're they're resisting a lot of they're resisting actually helping they're coming to do a, to to make to create a business how would i just put it uh, what i'm trying to say is that when somebody thinks that they can create a business online uh, that will be easier than where the, what they failed to do offline they're they're sometimes confused because really online what you need to do is you need to connect to people and stop thinking about the money and when you're starting the business and if you don't have enough money if you go online, that can put so much pressure that it's very difficult on your discovery calls to be not thinking about the sale and thinking about the help. And I think that that's where that switch is what you need to focus on. Yeah, I agree. It's it, here's the thing. I've, I find that a lot of people, they feel like, <clears throat> well, <laughs> and I'm going to speak for myself before I really like started getting it right. I thought, I envisioned, I'll, I'll just figure out how to do internet marketing because I'm, I'm pretty geeky that way. And I'm like, cool, I can figure this stuff out. And then I can just like push a button somewhere. I don't have to talk to anybody and I'll just make like the money will just flow into my bank account. And I think subconsciously or in the back of people's mind, they have that impression as well. But as you said, internet or internet marketing, but online business 
is just as much about relationship as offline business. In fact, even more so. Mm -hmm. And you made a really good point about, um, you know, it's still about connection. And here, in my mind, what's what's the difficulty in online marketing, what makes it more difficult, is that you have to find a way to connect with invisible people. That's right. That's right. So, when you're offline marketing, you know, that usually looks like going to networking events or uh, giving a talk and you get to see people face to face and you get so much energy or, or information rather by meeting somebody or even seeing them through a video. It's like if you and I had met initially on the phone or even like through emails, let's say we had been emailing each other back and forth, like I would have a sense for you. But then when we actually met, even if it was online or, or through Zoom like this, it's like we would both get a flood of information about each other. You would just see me and go, oh, oh, that's who she is. I yeah. get it. So, and that's the whole thing is that people will buy, everybody has heard this, but I hope I can take it to a little deeper level of meaning. People buy from people that they know, like, and trust. So trust, and that trust information comes from connection and from the information that we get. So what you're doing when you're marketing online is you, whether it's through a Facebook ad or an email to your list or whatever, is that you are having to find a way to connect to people that you've never met. You don't know who they are. They're completely invisible. And that's what makes it, you know, that to me is the, is the I don't want to say difficulty, but it's the challenge. It's the it's challenge. challenge. And so that's what, if you want to have a virtual online business, what you need to get really good at is connecting through um, words and whether it's on video or, you know, writing things. And again, going back to what I said initially, <clears throat> which isn't about talking about us, it's about understanding deeply, deeply that invisible person, we call it an avatar, but understanding them deeply and being able to speak to their problem or their pain so that when people read it or hear you on a video, they go, oh my God, she's describing me. Right. There's a weight loss coach that I follow and she she did this little video and she talks about, um, oh, she oh, she was so nailing the pain. And one of the lines she said just stuck out. She goes, are, are you sick of having three different sizes of clothes in your closet? And I'm like, how did you know? Have you been in my closet? Oh, my God. I am still refusing to buy a size up. I'm squeezing into the one. <laughs> so, so if you heard that, you'd go, oh, my God. And you'd probably, like, you'd want to know more about this woman. Because exactly. she's with you. You know what's happening on this interview? Now, we have, like, 20 minutes. I'm already 15 minutes past. And we haven't even scratched the surface because this issue, in fact, we were actually planning to talk about something completely different, but I'm glad we're talking about this. We were planning to talk about list building. We might do a plan, you know, a second one of these, but the ideal client, I think is a brilliant uh, thing that came up because a lot of people, including myself, the word avatar to start with, just such an off-putting word that just threw me into anxiety attacks at the start because I just, I don't understand what it is. And and, and then even when I met uh, someone who was like my ideal client, what I've learned over the time then after that, that it's actually so much simpler uh, when they say know truly who your person is, you know, uh, because most of people go into this kind of denial mode and they're like, oh, I can't talk to one person. What am I? I'm excluding everybody else who can pay me money. But actually it's about the traits. It's about those traits they, that your, your, your ideal client has and that you probably 100% share with them deeply. It's what you believe in, what they believe in, what they are prepared to trade their life for. I found that these are the things that are actually much more important than their age group and, and their gender. Although these beliefs and what all these things will probably be, you know, attributes of a certain gender, certain age group. Yes, it's no. true. And you work it backwards when people do um, what I call false avatars. They usually sound like this. So Mary uh, is, you know, middle-aged. She lives on a farm with two goats and a cat. And it's like, no. That doesn't work for me at all. <laughs> not, that, no, 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 no. So, you know, it's more like 
Mary wants more than anything in the world to cause transformation in the world. She feels called to this. You know, she she's and I, it's, some Marys are married and some Marys aren't. It, it doesn't matter. Her circumstances are going to be different. Right. But if she is married, you know, her she's been working on this business for a while. Maybe she's written a book. I'm describing my avatar now. She's maybe done a, a webinar. She's really tried to tackle this. Her husband is a little bit befuddled about it all, you know, and she's just dead certain. And yes, she needs to make money and she really wants to make money. But what she really wants more than anything in the world is to bring that is to help people to bring that message out into the world. And so she's gathered all these pieces. She's got a webinar. She's taken a course on writing a book. She's, she's got even an online course and, and she's made nothing. And now her husband, if she has one in her life is starting to kind of go, you know, Mary, maybe we need to get a job again. Right. And she's on the edge of this, but she's just feeling driven, almost called. Right. So I'm describing there her frustration, her confusion, and, and also this like underneath desire that's almost indescribable uh, of just really wanting to make a, a difference in the world. And of course I share those traits that described me when I first started this journey. And the more I can understand that person who was my past self, or at least a version of my past self. And again, the circumstances don't matter. Mm -hmm. Were they divorced? Are they single? Who cares? It doesn't matter. Sure. But the underlying, so it's the, it's the, um, the driving force, like you said, and the problem where they're at, like, why aren't they there with whatever they're driving towards? Why aren't they there? Where do they feel stuck? And, and that when you can describe that, that's all you need to be able to describe. And I can circle this back to list building super quick if you want, because <laughs> so, so how do you discover this, right? So I said, you know, marketing isn't salesy or pushy. You're going around talking about what you're doing. It's, it's listening to people so that you can really understand the problem or at least where people think where they think the problem is because then you want to bring them to what the problem really is right and then they're ready to to purchase to which is really just to move forward towards their dreams in a in a clarity way but so how do you discover this well you want to talk to people <laughs> a lot of people a lot of people is how you find this out you don't figure it out you know, in your home office, yeah. you know, on your computer, or even with a really smart business coach, I'm sorry, you know, we, yeah. we can't, you know, I, 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 oh, it just drives me nuts when coaches say, you know, give somebody their niche. It's like, how dare you? That's, you know, that's, that's, that's true. Come. It's yeah, that's true. And, and, you know, and uh, the thing is that it is a long process to really, really understand someone. You cannot yes. do an ideal client clarity session and in two hours actually know them but you can be maybe given some ideas to go go away and think about it and then you know get more clarity into how to uh, discover them you know exactly. but how to communicate with them is so important so with the list building that's the key so, yes so it is so it's so important um, and you said, right, it's, it's a, it's a process and you get deeper and deeper. I am so much clearer about my ideal client now than I was a year ago. And I'm dead certain I'll be even clearer in a year from now. And here's the thing, your, that person, that avatar ideal client, they shift and change as you do, just as you grow. So do they. And so we, we really need enough, you know, data to discover who that person is. And that comes from talking to a number of people. And what's the best way to do that? Build a list and engage your list. So you wanna build a list, you want, you've got to start somewhere. And I always say, start with the problem, a shared problem, that's all you need to do. You know, how do you, how do I, right? And then fill in the blank. How do I get enough confidence to leave my job? How do I find, uh, the perfect man for me, whatever problem that your that you think your target audience is experiencing. And from that problem, you can attract people. I have a very specific way that I do it um, with my clients, but attract people around that problem. Now, you know, you have a group of people who are experiencing a problem, right? And then once you do that, now you can start. Well, when I say talking to them, it's really engaging and listening to them 
and then you can start to understand. If you just get, if you just listen to two people and ask some questions, it's not really enough data, you'll be confused. So you need to talk to and listen to a bunch of people there by a list. And then guess what? Once you've listened to like 20 people um, from your list and really started to get clarity on who they are and what they're struggling with, well, guess what the next step is that's really obvious. When you uncover that it's something you can solve, boom, to, you make them an offer, so. That's true, that's Sorry. true. Did you just say 20 people on the list? No, I said once you talk to 20 people. <laughs> oh, I just thought, I, because you know, a lot of people say, how many people have on the list? Oh, I have 60 people and nobody's buying anything. And I'm like, yeah. Oh. Well, 60 people, no, it's nowhere near enough to, to actually get somebody, but, but it is enough if you can get 20 of those 60 people into a conversation with you, that's plenty enough to, you know, figure out how to now talk about the problem that your people are experiencing and that should help you get a sale. Absolutely. And you know, what's an interesting thing you can do a 10 minutes or 15 minutes call. That's not a discovery call. That's where you don't pitch. They don't, you know, and if they are by any chance want to sell something to you, you just make it an agreement that you don't pitch and you really just talk 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Listen. Yeah. Uh, that's how I start off all my people. And it's really like, it's amazing because they always come into my programs, you know, going, Oh God, I'm going to have to embrace this marketing beast that I hate. And I'm going to, am I going to hate myself at the end of this, <laughs> of this course? And, and that's the first thing I have them do is do a bunch of interviews and they're not allowed to pitch. They're not, they don't. And they come out and they're just like, Oh my God, I get these people. I get it. I, and I can help them. Oh, this is amazing. And, <laughs> That's and, the thing. Yes, yes. And, and you find and, your area. You find, oh, sorry, I'm talking across you, but uh, you find your area of genius because there's a lot of people are multi-talented and they get confused. Like, what can I do? Because I can, yeah. can do this, this, and this, and this. And we are like that. If you're a tech, you know, if you're like a geek, then you know so many things. And it was the same for me, you know, when I actually saw clearly after conversations, what exactly I can do. And it wasn't what I was offering before, you know, and that's why I wasn't making sales with, with what I was offering before, because it wasn't exactly what my ideal client wanted or needed. Yeah. So it's a, it's such a good, it's such a good point. Um, but okay. So we have the list. We start, we started building lists. That's a huge problem for people because they don't know how to build the list. And I know that you have a little gift. We don't even have to go deeply into it. No, but maybe just what it is and where can they get it? Yes, definitely. So exactly how do you build a list? And, and remember the list solves all problems, helps you figure out who your person is, and then the rest just is organic happens, or the sales happen organically. So I have a little three-part video training series. I think each video is about 10 minutes long, and it's called the top six ways to build a list. So I go over all, I give you an overview of all the different ways to build a list and help steer you towards the one that's best for you. And you can get that at biglistbreakthrough.com. Fantastic. The, na the name says it all. That's all you have to do. The list is in the name. Guys, thank you so much for watching us. Uh, Barb, thank you for being my lovely guest. It was just so much goodness. And uh, I hope, guys, that you picked up on a couple of things, takeaways. Number one, listen. Don't talk about yourself. We're not here getting a job, right? We're, we're listening. We're listening to see how we can help. And if you don't know your ideal client, start making conversation. Zoom is free. You can get free uh, version of Zoom and it's fantastic. So easy to install, so easy to use, but amazing to connect to people and just get yourself, get yourself through this process with open mind and open heart <laughs> because it's not about you. Is that, isn't that what we started with? Yeah. It's not about you. Barb, thank you so much again. And guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll be back with another fantastic guest uh, on my Show Up Stand Out show. So stay cool and see you all later. Bye.